Is it really possible to bring back to life a legendary creature that has been completely extinct from the face of the Earth for exactly 10,000 years? A creature we've only known through its fossils? Sounds like something straight out of a science fiction movie, right? But this week, we began with news that seems almost too incredible to be true. Scientists have done it. Well, partially. You heard that right. An extinct animal has started walking among us once again. The iconic predator of the Ice Age, the dire wolf, has returned. Or, at least, that's what the company behind this project claims. However, it might be more accurate to say that a synthetic organism resembling the dire wolf has been created, rather than truly bringing the species back from extinction. And I'll explain the reasoning behind this statement in a moment. But for now, let's follow the trail of the story presented by Colossal. These wolf pups, born in October of last year, were introduced to the world this week, six months later. They've been named Remus and Romulus. The name Romulus probably reminds you of Rome, doesn't it? That's no coincidence, and I'll get to that part soon. When these two were first born, they looked just like regular puppies. At just 15 days old, they began taking their first steps with their tiny paws. By the time they were one month old, they had reached a developmental milestone. Unlike dogs, they entered a transitional phase. At one month, they learned how to growl and chew and began to step outside their den and explore the real world. Three months later, at the start of 2025, their socialization period began, which is one of the most critical stages of their development. They were weaned off milk, sharpened their instincts through play, and began forming stronger bonds with one another. Their teeth grew, and while playing with deer antlers and sticks, they strengthened both their jaws and their bones. By the fifth month, a new instinct began to awaken within them. The pups started to understand hierarchy, challenge each other, and learn the rules of the pack. Although it may have looked like they were simply play fighting, these actions were actually serious preparations for life in a pack. Let me emphasize this again. The wolves you're seeing now were extinct 10,000 years ago. Today, these wolves, running freely in a secret 2,000-acre fenced reserve, exist as just two individuals in the entire world. After these two males, scientists also managed to bring a female into the world named Khaleesi, the first female direwolf brought back from extinction. Even at just six months old, these pups had already grown to 1.2 meters in length and weighed around 40 kilograms. Can you imagine how massive an adult direwolf could become? Some say they might grow up to two meters in length, but how? How can a species that vanished thousands of years ago be brought back? Or was it really brought back at all? Are these dire wolves truly identical to the original species? And more importantly, what other extinct animals might we see return in the future? In this video, we'll dive into every detail of this astonishing story that seems to push the very boundaries of science. But first, we keep mentioning the dire wolf. What exactly is it? And how is it different from the wolves we know today? The animal known by its Latin name, Canis dirus, is referred to in English as the dire wolf, which literally means a terrible, fearsome, or awe-inspiring wolf. These massive predators lived in North and South America during the Ice Age. You can think of them as the larger, more muscular, and more powerful cousins of the gray wolves we know today though unfortunately, gray wolves themselves are now endangered. Dire wolves had broader skulls than modern wolves, incredibly powerful jaws, and much larger teeth. In short, they were apex predators, true mega-hunters. Genetically, they are actually quite distinct from the wolves alive today. In fact, some scientists even consider them a separate genus. But if they were so mighty, even fearsome, what caused them to go extinct? As the Ice Age came to an end, the climate began to change. The massive animals that dire wolves once hunted, woolly mammoths, giant bison, started to disappear. And the dire wolf? It had evolved into a near-perfect specialist for hunting these colossal beasts. But when their prey vanished, they couldn't adapt fast enough. And around 10,000 years ago, the dire wolves went completely extinct. To bring them back, scientists started with ancient fossils, 
extracting DNA from a 13,000-year-old tooth and an incredible 72,000-year-old ear bone. They then analyzed this DNA and decoded the direwolf's genetic blueprint. But here's the twist. They didn't simply use that ancient DNA directly. Instead, they took the DNA of modern gray wolves and made just 20 small edits across 14 specific genes. That's it, just 20. And those few genetic tweaks were enough to bring back the dire wolf's legendary size, powerful muscles, and wide jaws. This wasn't standard cloning either. Instead of using tissue, they used a special kind of blood-derived cell called an endothelial progenitor cell. This method is less invasive and has a much higher success rate. Using this edited genetic material, they created 45 embryos and implanted them into surrogate mothers. Not wolves, but carefully selected large, healthy domestic dogs. These surrogate mothers carried the embryos until birth and delivered the pups via C-section. A four-person surgical team handled the birth, and another team took over to care for the pups afterward. The pups only stayed with their surrogate mother for a few days. Her protective instincts were so intense that the team had to step in. They were switched to bottle feeding, and by eight weeks, they were fully weaned. Now, here's an unexpected story that came out of the research, an anecdote that left even the scientists stunned. Shortly after the pups were born, Romulus and Remus, the first two, one of the veterinarians was weighing them. As she worked, she started humming a tune from The Little Mermaid. Her voice rose and fell gently, and suddenly, the pups began to howl. For the first time in 10,000 years, the ancient cry of the direwolf echoed through the room. Everyone froze, as if Romulus and Remus were calling out from the past, awakening a sound the world hadn't heard for millennia, and their names, Romulus and Remus named after the legendary twins raised by a she-wolf who would go on to found Rome. The symbolism couldn't be more poetic. In that myth, wolves raised humanity. But now, humanity is raising the wolves. From the moment they opened their eyes, the pups developed rapidly, much faster than modern dogs. They began to display classic wolf behavior, despite having a dog as their mother. Even as tiny cubs, they showed strong predatory instincts, chasing down anything that moved. Leaves, bugs, shadows. Their diet included beef, horse meat, venison, and liver. At first, it was pureed, then whole chunks. But so far, they've never hunted a live animal. And something remarkable, they avoid humans, even the scientists who feed them daily. Whatever ancient switch was flipped in their genes, it seems a 10,000-year-old instinct has returned. Don't trust humans. To this day, the scientists behind their creation haven't disclosed the exact location of the direwolves. We only know that they live on 2,000 acres of fenced-off land surrounded by three-meter-high barriers. The goal now? To see whether they can survive in the wild. But here's where we have to pause and dig deeper. Colossal, the company behind this experiment, claims they've brought an extinct species back to life, and the media has echoed that claim. But scientifically, the truth is more nuanced. Yes, the technology is revolutionary, but the animals themselves, they're not purebred dire wolves. They're genetically modified gray wolves, wolves engineered to resemble dire wolves using precision gene editing. Some scientists even argue that dire wolves aren't closely related to gray wolves at all, possibly splitting from a common ancestor six million years ago, and genetically closer to jackals. Colossal disputes this, but has yet to publish any peer-reviewed data to back up its claims. So, for now, it's more accurate to say these are synthetic organisms, not resurrected relics of the Ice Age. In other words, we're not reviving the past, we're engineering a future. So, why do it? Why bring back a species that disappeared thousands of years ago? The answer lies in conservation. Every year, hundreds of animal species go extinct. Biodiversity is declining at a staggering rate. By 2050, it's predicted that 30% of all species may be gone. The techniques developed to revive the direwolf could be used to save critically endangered animals. In fact, Colossal is now using the same methods to try and rescue the red wolf, 
one of the most endangered canids on Earth. And that's not all. They're also working on bringing back the woolly mammoth. Yes, the giant, shaggy, Ice Age mammoth. They've already created mice with mammoth DNA. Their target year, 2026. They're even working to revive the Tasmanian tiger, extinct for nearly a century. These revived species could also help protect their endangered modern relatives by reintroducing lost genetic diversity. But there are serious ethical and ecological questions, too. What happens if reintroduced animals disrupt the ecosystems of today? We've seen this before. Cane toads, introduced to Australia to control pests, instead decimated native wildlife. And then there's the risk of health issues. Many cloned animals suffer from immune deficiencies, organ failure, and premature aging. Another ethical concern? Their social needs. Direwolves once roamed vast territories in large packs. But today, these revived pups? Just three of them, two males, one female, isolated in a secure facility. Is that life enough? Can a direwolf truly live like a direwolf? In confinement? We live in strange times, my friends. We are the same species that destroys nature, and the same species trying to bring it back. These young wolves have resurrected more than just a species. They've brought back a voice, a sound, lost to time. And every time I hear it, yes, it gives me chills. But maybe the real question isn't whether we should have brought them back. Maybe it's this. Can we make this world worthy of them? A world safe enough, wild enough, beautiful enough for them to live in again? Because so far, we haven't even done that for ourselves.